Hello and welcome to ISTV English News. I'm Dhania. Let's take a look at the top story first. One police commando killed, two others injured in series of ambush by suspected NSCN IM cadres at two different places on Imphal Ukrul Road. The news in detail. In what may be aptly described as a retributive action for all that happened in Ukrul town during the last few weeks, including the death of two Tankul civilians on August 30, armed persons believed to be cadres of NSE and IM today laid a series of ambush on Manipur police commandos, killing one commando and injuring at least two other personnel at two different places on Imphal Ukrul Road. The first ambuscade was laid at a place on Imphal Ukrul Road between Mahadev and Litan under the jurisdiction of Litan Police Station around 9 a.m. today. Manipur police personnel retaliated and a fierce fighting reportedly ensued for about 10 minutes. In that gunfight, two personnel of Thaubal Police Commando, identified as Namin Thang Nom Song, 29, of Tuibong Village, and Kumukcham Amuthoi, 33, of Kakching Kunau, sustained serious injuries. They have been admitted to Jainim's hospital, where their condition is stated to be critical. Amuthoi was so seriously injured that CT scan examination could not be done on him at the Jainim's hospital, and he was taken away to a private hospital. The second ambuscade was laid at Semkai Kul, located between gate number 2 of Hundung and Nungsang Khong around 9.30 a.m. Armed persons believed to be NSE and IM cadres attacked a convoy of police, commandos, IRBs and MR personnel who were returning from Ukrul after camping there for almost a month. State force personnel also retaliated. One personnel of Imphal East Police Commando received injuries. He is reported to have been taken to a unit of Assam Rifles situated on the road for treatment. Reinforcements of Manipur Police Commandos from Imphal and Ukrul, led by DIG Range 1 IK Muiva and SP Imphal East District Police Angam Kamai, have rushed to the sites of the ambuscades. DGP Manipur additional DGP and many other top-ranking police officials visited Jainim's hospital and inquired about the condition of the two injured personnel. The first ambuscade occurred when a team of Manipur police personnel was carrying out road opening patrol for the large team of police personnel being withdrawn from Ukrul. It may be recalled that the state government decide, decided to withdraw the prohibitory orders under CRPC Section 144 and eventually the state forces from Ukrul as the law and order situation in the hill town has purportedly returned to normalcy. Reliable sources revealed to the ISTV News that Governor VK Dugal has summoned the Chief Minister and the Deputy Chief Minister to discuss the series of ambush and casualties among the state security personnel. With the beginning of Langban month in the Maite calendar, floral tributes were offered to the martyrs who sacrificed their lives fighting for the integrity of the state at Kekrupat. During the program organized by UCM, President Y. Navachandra, members of various civil society organizations and women organizations offered floral tributes at the tomb of the martyrs. Talking to media persons, President of UCM Y. Navachandra said, UCM has been observing this day for the peaceful existence of the departed souls. He further said, the indefinite band called by the United Naga Council has hampered the day-to-day -day life of both hills and valley people. Using band and blockades as a tool to earn one's demands is not a good decision. It is a crime against humanity. It is just like violating the rights of a human being, he said. United Naga Council now, Matam Kaptana, Chingi Naga Tabalam Singha, Akuji Gari, Chelan, the Bugi, Blocket, Amaka Chateribusi, Toyon, Dono, you send you, Mienda, Yamna, inhuman over, Mir Bugi, Adumabu, Wakalo, Chain Daba, Adumaba, Taung, Amani, Haina, Lowi, Matam Kaptava, Hyber, Kari Hatari, Mianda, Akuji, Saitienzi, Haini Halit and a Piba, Adumaba, Amaka, Uvnamaram, Oraganda, Akuji, Hariba, Mokuji, Matam Kaptava, Blocket, Simasi, Kudimuni, Yabun Tokte, Yam, inhuman over, Adumabu, Tongomani, and Kali. 
Students wing of JC ILPS has demanded that additional SP of Imphal West, Y Victoria, younger sister of Devson, should be terminated from service. Speaking to media persons at the headquarter of MSU, DM College campus, Convener of Students Wing JC ILPS, Sanasam Subhash Chandra said, on September 5, a team of Students Wing of JC ILPS had conducted a verification of non-locals in Singjamai areas. During the verification, a non-local escaped from the spot and ran inside a shop named Tachri Interior. When the visiting team of JC ILPS asked the proprietor of the shop, Y. Devson, elder brother of additional SP Victoria, to bring out the non-local, Devson refused to do so and a heated exchange ensued, the convener said. He further said, Devson was informed to come to the JC ILPS office at Nongmaibung on that day. Yesterday, Devson came to the office with his assistant along with his driver. A tussle between the members of JC ILPS and Devson occurred. Later, Victoria came to the office and pulled up the members of JC ILPS. The way additional SP Victoria came to the office which is out of her jurisdiction and pulled up the members is highly condemnable. He drew the attention of the authority concerned to take necessary action against her according to law at the earliest. Besides, the members of JC ILPS arrested by the police should be released without any condition, he demanded. On the other hand, JC ILPS will not attend the talks with the government of Manipur on the issue. President of Manipur Truck Owners Welfare Association, H. Ranjit, has refuted the statement of Deputy General Manager of FCI, KSH Thoiba, that drawing of rice from Jiribam was stopped due to truck owners' failure to deposit the necessary amount. Besides, the DGM has misled the government as well as the people of Manipur, he alleged. Addressing the media at the office of the association at MG Avenue, Ranjit said the necessary amount had been deposited with the State Bank of India in the name of FCI on June 17 and September 1. In fact, it is a big surprise that despite the amount has been deposited in favor of the department, such a responsible officer has the guts to say that it has not been deposited. Thoiba is not qualified for the post. Therefore, he should be removed from the post. On the other hand, the president also expressed surprise to learn that DGM Thoiba informed that there is talk of rice for 60 days. In fact, there is talk of rice for 40 days only in Imphal. It is not fair that rice stock at Dimapur, Senapati and Jiribam has been added to the stock list of Imphal. Moreover, what is the secret agenda of DGM Thoiba for betraying the Imphal Jiri road, Ranjit asked. The FCI regional office at Imphal is not functioning properly and the office is always waiting for the instruction of the FCI Dimapur, he alleged. 2013 
guarantee tahu nasib, numi hubu ni kisian lebar lekta berai. Numi hubu ni cakap orang cakap berai je, guarantee tahu nasib. UNACO School organized a one-day interaction program on communication and adolescent learners at UNACO School Kongman in collaboration with Council for Teacher Education (CTE) today. President of CTE Manipur Chapter Dr. T H Asha, Professor of English Department Manipur University Dr. I Gambir, General Secretary of TCS International Professor Nalima Bhagabali attended the program. Dr. T H Asha said. Teachers should not only teach what has been written in the texts, but they should also teach new things which are useful to the students. The sixth Foundation Day celebration of Indira Gandhi National Tribal University Regional Campus Manipur was held at Amity Hall Adimjati Complex in Fal today. Commissioner of Higher and Technical Education P Y P, Vice Chairman of Indira Gandhi National Tribal University Amar Kantak. Professor T V Katim Joy and Professor Gang Mumai Kamai attended the celebration. P Y P I said teachers have a big role in molding the students to be good pillars of the future. Professor Gang Mumai Kamai said Indira Gandhi National Tribal University is playing a huge role in uplifting the tribal people who are lagging behind in education. He expressed his desire to make the university a full-fledged one. In today's national and international news. Prime Minister Narendra Modi for years barred from visiting the United States will meet President Barack Obama in two days of White House talks at the end of the month. The meetings on September 29 and 30 will take place on Mr Modi's first visit to Washington since he led the Bharatiya Janata Party BJP to a crushing victory in May's elections. It is unusual for a foreign leader especially one who is not making a state visit to go to the White House on two separate days. The fact that there will be interactions over two days is a signal of the importance we place on the US India relationship said National Security Council spokeswoman Caitlin Hayden. Mr Modi was told in 2005 by the administration of President George W Bush that he would be refused a visa to visit the United States. after being accused of not intervening to stop communal riots which took place in Gujarat in 2002 after he had taken over as chief minister he has denied that he did not do enough to stop the riots in which more than 1000 people were killed most of them muslims a supreme court inquiry has said there is no evidence to merit his prosecution The Aam Aadmi Party aps claim that it has taped a BJP leader offering its legislator 4 crores to switch sides bore heavily on a hearing today in which the Supreme Court told the center to take steps at the earliest on government formation in Delhi otherwise horse trading will continue the court's remarks came as the center said the political process of forming a government has begun after delhi's lieutenant governor najib jung recommended last week that the single largest party should be invited the ruling bjp said it would consider forming a government the moment it received an invite aap chief arvind kejriwal was present today as his party filed a new affidavit urging a five judge constitutional bench to take note of the sting video and stop the bjp bjp from taking power The BJP argued that the allegation of horse trading was unsubstantiated. The court said it would take up the AAP video on October 10, but also cautioned the center against delaying a decision. When we granted the center time, our intention was to arrive at a resolution so that either a government is formed or fresh elections held, the judges said. On a lighter note, they wondered, why is it called horse trading? Why not man trading? In the 17 minute AAP video allegedly recorded on Sunday the BJP's Sher Singh Dagar is seen talking to AAP legislator Dinesh Mohania Mr Dagar did not deny the meeting at his residence but said the video was edited and he had never offered money As the political slugfest between Bharatiya Janata Party and Aam Aadmi Party regarding government formation in Delhi continues, the center on Tuesday sought 4 weeks time from Supreme Court on the matter. The center told the apex court that Lieutenant General Najib Jung had recommended that the Bharatiya Janata Party, the largest party in assembly, be allowed to form government in Delhi. SC told center to conclude process of forming government in Delhi quickly. 
because if it does not happen, horse trading will continue. Jung had written to President Pranab Mukherjee on the stalemate in Delhi, government told the court. It added that the matter was under consideration by the President. SC granted Centre time till October 10 to reply about the outcome of political consultations on government formation in Delhi on a petition by AAP. Delhi has been under President rule since February 17 following the resignation of the AAP government which was in power for 49 days. Jammu and Kashmir is facing its worst floods in six decades that have left nearly 200 people dead. Srinagar has practically become an island and over 7 lakh people are stranded there with many areas completely underwater. Cloudy weather in Srinagar could hamper air sorties on Tuesday. The Met Department has predicted rainfall in Jammu too on Tuesday. Heavy floods and rainfall triggered landslides in the Udhampur district of Jammu. Rescue workers pulled out seven bodies in the Pancheri area of Udhampur. But 40 people are feared trapped under the debris. Nearly 25 houses were buried in the landslide. A team of the National Disaster Response Force and Police have been airlifted to the area to undertake the rescue operation. There are constant landslides in the upper reaches of Jammu, even as the water has receded in Jammu. It's not just locals who are stuck in the flood-hit state. A number of tourists and students are also stranded. More than 23,000 people have been evacuated, but lakhs remain stranded. The valley is cut off as many roads have been washed away. Two teams of NDRF equipped with 30 boats today reached Srinagar as the force launched intensive operations to rescue people marooned and stranded by floods and rising waters. National Disaster Response Force NDRF Chief O.P. Singh told the media that 30 boats have been airlifted from Tamil Nadu's Arakonam and have reached Srinagar today along with a 100 personnel strong contingent of the force to undertake and bolster the ongoing rescue operations. Chinese President Xi Jinping will make his first visit to India as head of state on a regional visit that starts this week. He is expected in Delhi on Monday, though his itinerary has not yet been shared. Mr. Z has postponed a trip to Pakistan, which had originally been a part of his tour due to ongoing unrest in the country. From economic parity in 1980, China's growth has outstripped India's fourfold. Its rising economic presence in the Indian Ocean region has stoked concerns in New Delhi that China is creating a string of pearls that surrounds India and threatens its security. While China and India have close economic and historical links, there is deep suspicion too, fueled in part by a festering border dispute. After Al-Qaeda's announcement of formation of an Indian wing, an organization of Shia Muslims has announced a reward of rupees 1 crore each for the killing of the chiefs of ISIS, Al-Qaeda, jamaat u dawa Taliban and harkat ul mujahideen At the meeting of our All India Executive on September 6, we discussed the matter of putting reward on killing of these five persons heading five organizations involved in terrorism. The resolution was unanimously passed. We will give the reward to those who kill them. Secretary General of All India Shia Husseini Fund, AISHF, Syed Hassan Mehdi said. He said that the organization will collect rupees 5 crore for elimination of ISIS chief Abu Bakr Baghdadi, Al Qaeda chief Al Zawahiri, Jamaat u Dawa chief Hafiz Saeed, Taliban chief Mullah Umar, and Harkat ul Mujahideen chief Azar Masood. The Dutch team investigating the downing of Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 over eastern Ukraine says the crash was likely caused by the plane being hit by multiple high-energy objects from outside the aircraft. The preliminary report published Tuesday by the Dutch Safety Board stopped short of saying the Boeing 777 was shot down by a surface-to-air missile, but its findings appear to point to that conclusion. The Boeing 777 was blown out of the sky July 17 over rebel-held territory in eastern Ukraine, killing all 298 passengers and crew on board. And now let's take a look at the top story once again. One police commando killed two others injured in series of ambush by suspected NSE and IM cadres at two different places on Infal Ukrul Road. Thanks for joining us and for more news updates, do keep watching.